Assalamu alaikum this is me Dr. Saifullah and I welcome you to the new video about distributions and shareholders, dividends and share purchases. After watching this video you will be able to answer the following questions. What are dividends and share purchases and how do they differ in terms of their impact on a company's financials? What factors should a company consider when deciding whether to pay dividends or repurchase shares? What are advantages and disadvantages of dividends and share repurchases from the perspective of shareholders and company? How do dividends and share repurchases affect a company's stock price and overall value? In corporate finance, the financial manager is responsible for making decisions that are in the best interest of shareholders or in other words to maximize the wealth of shareholders. The three most important operational decisions are the capital budgeting decision that is concerned with what real assets the firm should acquire. A good capital budgeting decision is one in which the benefits are worth more for the firm than the cost of assets. The financing decisions. The financing decision is concerned with how these assets should be financed. Financing decisions involves trade-off between advantages and disadvantages of debt and equity financing. The third decision is the working capital management that is about managing day-to-day -day financial matters. Thus, mismanagement of the working capital can cause the firm to go into bankruptcy even though the firm is in profit. The fourth decision may arise, however, when the firm begins to generate profits. Should the firm distribute all or proportion of earned profit in the form of dividends to shareholders or should it be plugged back into the business? In taking any course of action, managers should concentrate on how to maximize the wealth of shareholders for whom the firm is being managed. In this video, we will mostly talk about the fourth decision that is dividends and distributions. The decision about distributions and share purchases are expressed in dividend policy. The term dividend policy refers to the practice that management follows in making dividend payout decisions or in other words, the size and pattern of cash distributions over time to shareholders. Managers must not only consider the question of how much the company earnings are needed for investment, but also take into account consideration of the possible effect of their decisions on share prices. This issue of dividend policy is one that has engaged managers since the birth of modern commercial corporations. The dividend policy remains one of the most contested issues in finance. Cash distribution. Cash distribution refers to the payments made by a company to its shareholders or owners in the form of cash. These distributions are typically made from the company's profits or accumulated earnings and are considered a way to return value to the shareholders. Procedures for cash distributions. The procedure for cash dividend distributions typically involves the following steps. The first is declaration of dividends. The company's board of directors declares the dividend specifying the amount to be distributed per share. The second step is in dividend date. That is the last date to buy the shares to receive the dividends. Ex dividend date. The ex dividend date is the date on or after which a buyer of the stock will not be entitled to receive the declared dividend. Holder of the record date. The record date is the date on which the company determines the shareholders who are entitled to receive the dividends. This information is based on the share ownership record. After this date, the company calculates the entitlement for each eligible shareholders based on the number of shares held by shareholders and prepare the dividend register. The next is payment date that determine the payment date when the cash dividends will be distributed to the eligible shareholders. This date is typically specified in the dividends declaration. After this, the company sends notice or announcement to the shareholders, which includes information about dividend payments. Also, the company allocate the necessary funds and initiate the payment process. It is important to note that these procedures may vary depending on the jurisdiction, company policies and specific circumstances. Stock repurchase 
instead of giving shareholders the cash dividend sometimes company repurchases its stocks the stock repurchases occurs when a company buys back some of its own outstanding stocks situation can lead to stock repurchases a company may decide to increase its leverage by issuing debt and using the proceeds to repurchase stock many firms have given their employees stock options and companies often repurchase their own stock to sell to employees when employees exercise the options in this case the number of outstanding shares reverts to its pre purchase level after the options are exercised to prevent dilution when a company issues new shares it can dilute the company ownership stake of existing shareholders buying back shares can help offset this dilution the next is a company may have excess cash this may be due to a one time cash inflow such as a sale of advian or the company may simply be generating more free cash flows than it needs to service its debt the company can also buy back their shares to increase the shareholders value note that the repurchase stock is called treasury stock and is shown as a negative value on the company's detailed balance sheet on the consolidated balance sheet treasury shares are deducted to find shares outstanding and price paid for the repurchase shares is deducted when determining common equity companies can repurchase their shares by using one of the four options the first one is open market transactions fixed price tender offer repurchase by direct negotiation dutch auction share repurchase open market transactions share repurchases by open market transactions refer to a company's action where a company buys back its own shares from open market in this process the company purchases its shares directly from existing shareholders typically through a broker at a prevailing market prices the second method is fixed price tender offer share purchases by fixed price tender offer is an other method used by the companies to buy back their own shares in this approach the company offers to purchase a specified number of shares from existing shareholders at a predetermined fixed price repurchase by direct negotiation share repurchase by direct negotiation is a method used by the companies to repurchase their own shares directly from specific shareholders rather than through open market transactions or tender offer in this approach the company negotiates directly with the shareholders to agree on the terms and price of the share repurchases share repurchase by dutch auction share repurchase by dutch auction also known as dutch auction tender offer is a method used by companies to repurchase their own shares from existing shareholders it involves a unique bidding process that allows shareholders to submit the price and quantity of shares that are willing to sell the company then determines the purchase price based on the bids received 